Hi Year 6, it's great to be with you today. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Thank you so much to all of you who've been sending in work to our Year 6 email address. We've loved hearing from you, loved seeing what you've been up to, the pictures you've sent in. It's been great. Today, in our maths lesson, we're going to be looking at the properties of 2D shape, two-dimensional shapes, so flat shapes. And we're going to be using objects that we find around the house, so more about that later. But first, to get our maths brain ticking over, I have created a bit of a challenge for you. I was super impressed with all of you who completed the Stormbreaker Code Breaker Challenge and your perseverance. You didn't give up when you got the wrong answer first time, you kept going. And so I had a little look around the house and I came up with a few objects that helped me to make my own puzzle for you. So, take a look see what you think. So you can see from this puzzle that it's set out rather differently to the code break challenge that you had last week because you need to work across the page horizontally as well as down the page vertically to work out the missing values, the values of each object. The scissors are worth eight so the value of the scissors has already been given to you and that will then help you to work out the missing values of all the other objects. And when you've done that, you should be able to work out the missing number where the question mark is at the end. So perhaps you'd like to pause the video, freeze the screen so that you can still see the puzzle and good luck. How did you get on? Do send your answers in to us and we'll let you know if you've got the right answer. Perhaps you'd like to have a go at creating your own challenge like that with everyday objects around the house. You could try and add in some further challenge by including bid mass. So thinking about brackets, indices, which is your square numbers or your cube numbers, division and multiplication. Remember they happen at the same time working left to right because they're equal importance. So if multiplication comes before division in the calculation, you do the multiplication first. Same with addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction working left to right, but they are of equal balance. So if subtraction came first, you would do that before the addition. But I know you know that anyway. That's just a little reminder. So have a go and perhaps challenge someone in your house to answer your puzzle or send it to us or send it to a friend. We'd love to see how you're getting on. Okay, so a bit more about what we're going to do in the main part of today's lesson. As I said, we're going to be looking at properties of two-dimensional shapes, so flat shapes. And we're going to be looking at the names, just reminding ourselves of the names of parts of the shape. And we're going to be looking at whether they have symmetry and looking at the angles inside the shape. So the things that you'll need for this lesson, you'll need something to write on and something to write with. It could be paper and pen, it could be chalk outside in your garden if you're lucky enough to have space to be able to put chalk down. Um, it could be an empty cereal box opened up, whatever you've got. And also you're going to be collecting some 2D shapes from around your house. And I thought it might be a good idea to show you some of the things I've collected in my house to give you some ideas of the kind of things you could find. Take a look. As you can see, I managed to find quite a few 2D shapes in my house today. I've got things like a pair of scissors, a map, Pokemon cards, my origami rabbit that I made at Easter, a pizza plate, a tea bag, my shopping list, fridge magnet, a few shapes that I found in a puzzle. I've got a hammer bead base and I've even got a hammer bead Santa there. So I wonder what you can find in your house, how many 2D shapes you can find in your house. Go and have a look and I'll see you back here shortly. So pause the video now. We're now going to have a look at some of the key vocabulary that we'll be using in this lesson because we will be classifying our shapes. That means we'll be sorting them according to their properties and we can use the key vocabulary to help us. So we're looking at polygons. A polygon is a flat two-dimensional or 2D shape with straight sides that's fully closed. So all the sides are joined up. The sides must be straight. Polygons may have any number of sides. A shape with curved sides is not a polygon. 
So some of the key vocabulary you can see here, we've got the angle marked, internal angle. We've got a line of symmetry. The corners are called vertices. One corner is a vertex, more than one of vertices. We can see some parallel lines there where the distance between the lines at any point is equal. Perpendicular lines, which cross at a right angle, 90 degrees. We've got a regular polygon and an irregular polygon. I wonder if you can spot the difference. So a regular polygon has sides of the same length and its internal angle angles are equal. With an irregular polygon, it can have sides of different length and the internal angles can also be of different sizes. So, now we've got the key vocabulary, we're ready to start to sort or classify our shapes. And I think for this, I'm gonna go out in the garden, so come on out with me. Now, I've brought my shapes out into the garden and I've drawn myself a Venn diagram here. And I thought about the properties of shape that we've just considered in our key vocabulary. And I decided on two categories that I would group my shapes. And one of them is a polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry. And the other category for my Venn diagram is a polygon with at least one pair of parallel sides. And I've just started to sort my shapes, see if you agree with me. I put the heart on the outside of the Venn diagram because I know that if a shape has curved sides, it can't be a polygon. So that has to go outside on the edge of the diagram. In the middle, I put my hammer bead board, which is a hexagon. And I put that in the overlap because a hexagon is a polygon with at least one pair of parallel sides. And it is also a polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry. Let's have a closer look. So my parallel lines are here and here, or here and here, or here and here. And if I was to be able to fold this in half, if I imagine a mirror line down the middle, this edge would be able to fold on top of here. So it does have at least one pair of parallel sides and it does have at least one line of reflective symmetry, which is why I've put it in the overlap between the two circles. And then I've come over here to my triangle, which I got out of my puzzle. and. That is a polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry because if I was to put a mirror line down the middle, it would be symmetrical. However, it is not a polygon which has at least one pair of parallel sides. And that's why I have put it over here, not in the overlap, but in this part of the Venn diagram. So. I'm going to have a go now at sorting all the rest of my shapes and then I'd like you to have a look and see if you think I've put them in the right place. See you in a minute. Okay, so I've had my turn. See what you think about where I've placed these objects. So, these are the ones that I placed in the category, a polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry. And then over to here, these two shapes are the ones that I considered were a polygon with at least one pair of parallel sides. These objects here I placed on the edge of the Venn diagram because I didn't consider that they went into any of the categories inside the diagram. And in the overlap, I've got all of these shapes which I consider our polygons with at least one line of reflective symmetry and they are also polygons with at least one pair of parallel sides. What do you think? Have I placed them all in the right category? Perhaps you can email in with the answer and let me know. Okay, I'm going to let you have a turn now, so pause the video and you go and 
classify your shapes and create your own Venn diagram. Now you could do this on paper and you could draw the shapes if you haven't got any paper large enough. If you have chalk, you could do it outside as I have. You could use the same categories as I've done to classify your shapes or you could go back on the video to the key vocabulary and choose two different categories. So, pause the video and when you're done, come back for the next task. How did you get on? I hope you managed to classify all of your 2D objects and that you've now completed your Venn diagram. I was having another look at mine and I realised that in the intersection, that's the overlap between the two circles, a huge amount of my objects were in that group and it was really crowded. So I started to think, is there another way that I could classify my shapes so that I was still using properties of shape but was able to classify them according to different properties so there wasn't such an overlap. And I've created a Carol diagram. So I'm going to show you where I'm up to with that and let's see how we get on. So you can see here that I've started my Carol diagram and I've started to classify the shapes. Let's go in closer and take a look. So, at the top, the two categories here, on the left, regular polygons, and on the right, irregular polygons. Can you remember what the difference is between the two? That's right, a regular polygon has sides of equal length, and the interior angles, the angles inside the shape, are all of the same size. And an irregular polygon will have sides of different lengths, which means that the angles inside will be different. And then I've kept my two categories that I had on the Venn diagram. A polygon with at least one pair of parallel sides and a polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry. Let's have a look where I'm up to. So my hammer bead board, which is a hexagon, I've placed in this category because it is a regular polygon and it has at least one pair of parallel sides. And I didn't actually have anything in my box of items that would fit in this category, so I went back inside, went on a hunt, found a coaster, a little mat, which I can now place in this category as it's a regular polygon and it does have at least one line of reflective symmetry. Okay, over this side. Now, my puzzle piece is an irregular polygon because although it has four sides, it's a quadrilateral, but they are of different lengths, so it's irregular. But it does have at least one pair of parallel sides. And then my Santa, my hammer bead Santa, is in the category of being a regular, sorry, an irregular polygon because it's sides are of different lengths and its interior angles are two. However, it does have at least one line of reflective symmetry because there's a mirror line down the middle of the face. So, so far so good. But then I came across a bit of a problem because I was trying to categorise my little origami rabbit. Now he's obviously an irregular polygon but he has got at least one pair of parallel sides across the top of his head and the base here. But he also has a line of reflective symmetry down the middle. Now in a Carol diagram we can't put things in between in the way that we can overlap in a Venn diagram. And I realised that quite a few of my objects can't be categorised according to the labels I've got on my Carol diagram. So what I need to do is to go back to the key vocabulary, have a little think and see how I can change one of the labels using properties of shape, which will enable me to fit more of my objects, my 2D shapes into my Carol diagram. I've now changed the category on one part of my Carol diagram to include angles. So over here, the new label is a polygon with at least one obtuse angle. 
let's just do a little bit of a revision on angles before we categorize more shapes so a right angle is 90 degrees that's the same as a corner and an acute angle is less than 90 degrees an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees if you really want to challenge yourself you could try and find some shapes with reflex angles which is greater than 180 degrees but less than 360 degrees I haven't got any of those so I haven't put that down on my Carol diagram now you can see that my hexagon does have at least one obtuse angle in fact it has six obtuse angles whereas if I go across here my irregular polygon which is a quadrilateral with four sides has got at least one obtuse angle this one so now I think I'm going to be more successful in classifying my shapes I'm going to take my turn now and then show you how I've got on this time I've managed to classify far more of my shapes so let's go in and take a look okay so my hexagon there and these shapes here do you agree with those and then here these shapes which are regular polygons do you agree with those I had an empty box though. I needed something which was an irregular polygon with at least one line of reflective symmetry. So I had a good think about it and I made myself a shape. So I have cut out here an isosceles triangle. You can see I've still got a few objects here that couldn't be classified. So my challenge to you is you're going to have a turn now to create your own Carol diagram and see if you can think really carefully about the properties of shape that you will choose so that you can use all of your shapes or as many as possible in your Carol diagram. Do take some pictures and send them in to us. One final challenge for you, true or false? A triangle can never have three acute angles. Prove it. So you could draw some triangles as examples of whether you think that statement is true or false. I hope you've enjoyed this math lesson as much as I have. I've loved doing all the activities with you and look forward to seeing everything that you send in to us. There will also be some activities on my maths linked to this lesson so you can follow up afterwards by doing some of those activities. Have fun and I'll see you soon.